Hi, welcome back to Auto Review. My name is Patrick and today I am presenting you the 2018 Ford EcoSport. I have already reviewed the EcoSport, the previous version in Dubai at that time. I'll just link the video on the top right for you so you can compare the design from the old one to the new one. And my parents actually drive the old one as well. So I'm pretty much uh, connected to this car somehow. All right, so before we get to the car, please hit the subscribe button. Activate the bell icon so you're informed about any new video and if you're interested in Ford or Mercedes in Wildersville, Interlaken, in Bern area here in Switzerland, uh, please check out the link to Elite Auto Center in Wildersville, which is just over there, uh, who were so kind to provide this car to me. So all the information you'll find as well down in the description. All right, so coming back to the EcoSport of the 2018 model year, what changed and obviously Pretty much outside it looks very similar, however we have a different front, we have a different rear. Uh, for example this one doesn't have the wheel cover that the old one had, which made it kind of a 4x4. Uh, however the old one was not available as a 4x4, which this one is, as you can see with the big stick on the side. Currently however, it's only available as a front wheel drive uh, and in autumn 2018 we'll have the all wheel drive available. However, there's a little bit salt in the soup because the all-wheel drive will only be available with a 1.5 liter diesel and with a six-speed manual gearbox. Here we are testing today the 1.0 liter EcoBoost petrol engine producing 125 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, maximum torque of 180 Newton meters at 4,400 RPM. It is a six-speed automatic gearbox, front-wheel drive car. We have a zero to 100 time in 11.8 seconds and a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour. Fuel consumption, I'll just show you on top one of the sides because I drove the car yesterday only around 150 kilometers. So I'm gonna drive it for another two days and only then I'm gonna tell you what is the fuel consumption uh, because I believe if you test the car driving around the block, it's pretty much useless to tell you guys if you're interested in the car, what is the consumption. So you'll see it on the top and I'll tell you in the second part of the video, uh, which will take place in two days, uh, what I think about the car. But today, because the weather is good, I'm gonna show you everything outside and inside. Now, very important thing as well is this engine has the Euro 6D temp CO2 emission standard, which is great. So you should not worry about going into city centers over the next, I don't know how many years. We have a CO2 emissions of 134 grams per kilometer, uh, fuel tank capacity of 52 liters. Obviously you can now calculate how much it's gonna be with the fuel consumption that you've seen. And prices for the EcoBoost in Switzerland starts at 19,900 Swiss francs retail price. And the one we have here in a titanium version would be 28,230 Swiss francs. This particular one, you'll have a demo um, or trial bonus uh, from Elite Auto Center. You'll find everything in the details. Now, uh, four trim offs are available for the EcoBoost, which is Trent, Business, Titanium and ST line. So we have the third highest, I would say, the Titanium, or is the highest, the ST line is a little bit more the sporty style. And uh, I do like what they did with the car. And I do like actually somehow that they removed the wheel uh, cover from the back door. It looks a little bit more refined. Now, one criticizing point I had with the old one is we had only halogen lights. And this is actually I have with this particular one here as well, because it only has halogen lights. However, from the trim level titanium and ST line, you have an option to upgrade to B Xenon headlights. And I do recommend you get this. So that's it from the outside. Let's go inside. I'll show you the first row, second row, then we hop out again. I'll show you the trunk space. And then in two days time for me, in a few minutes for you, uh, we'll drive on the road and tell you what I think about it. So have fun, enjoy, and let's go. All right, so the Echo Sport from inside, let's go from left to right and show you everything what we have here. So in the titanium version, obviously, we have now here electric windows. Uh, with one touch function on all four doors and you can see that all the windows go down all the way which is great. We have electric adjustable heated mirrors with blind spot assistant uh, with a little orange LED and, and they are electrically foldable as well even during driving. And then we have on the left side the fog lights front and rear, the automatic headlights again I mentioned unfortunately this one only has halogen lights but you can get external light. And then we can dim the interior light, which is great. I love it when you have physical buttons for that rather than going through some submenu. Steering wheel is adjustable in reach and rake. So you should be able to find a good position. 
and seat is adjustable as well in height and uh, we have a lumbar support, a manual one, which is good. Now, as I mentioned, we have a six-speed uh, automatic gearbox with a manual function over the shift pedals, right up, left down. Then cockpit is very clear with white and blue, which is good, left the RPM, right the speedo. On the bottom, we have the gear integrators, uh, obviously what we are in. We have as well a sport function for the gearbox. It will shift a little bit faster and rev a bit higher. Then we have on top uh, a little screen which gives us information. Now I have it on average fuel consumption which you can individualize a little bit. If you go down then you have a speed, you have the navigation. So this car comes with navigation not in the stock model however over Apple CarPlay you can plug in your phone and you can have Google Maps on it. Uh, however there is a little criticizing point I have as well with that is if you plug in your phone, you can't use the inbuilt navigation if you have it. It's really annoying, you can't go inside every time you go on a navigation, it will jump into maps from the phone. So if you want to use the internal navigation, if it's built in, you have to unplug your phone. A little bit stupid, but that's how it is. Um, then we have radio, um, telephone, settings and back to the trip computer. Again, uh, on the bottom we have as well the temperature and fuel gauge. Then steering wheel, uh, nice thickness not too thin not too thick then uh, here again the buttons to go through the menu we have the cruise control and a speed limiter cruise control start at 30 kilometers an hour which is very good i love that uh, with one kilometer steps you if you push further it will just jump you can jump like five or ten kilometers per hour steps and on the right side we have the volume voice recognition phone as well as uh, skip to the next radio station we have a push start button here for the engine navigation screen as i mentioned or actually menu screen uh, which is a start screen so you can go through here and go through different apps and well as i mentioned now the navigation i do like the navigation because the inbuilt one uh, because it shows you as well in the little screen on top if you have to go left or right so in addition to the screen in the middle if you use maps it doesn't do that that's why so hazard light in the middle air ventilation left and in the middle obviously on the bottom we have the uh, air conditioning it's a one zone air conditioning so we don't have dual zone or something like that we have heated seats in three settings we have heated steering wheel which is a pack parking sensors front and rear which i do recommend it comes as well with a reverse camera in this trim level traction control on and off start stop on and off we have two usb ports which is great one 12 volt power socket then we have two cup holders with spacers, which is good. Little tray below the handbrake for coins or something. Another square tray uh, behind the cup holders. Then armrest is good. I like it and you can extend it. However, it's a little low. I wish it, you could adjust it a little bit in height, which doesn't work. And as well, the center console is a little loose uh, to my taste. Uh, one thing that I discovered as well is the door handle. It makes a little bit noise, so the plastic is here. Otherwise than that, we have soft touch on top. This is hard. Obviously, this is soft again here. And this is all hard plastic. And glove box, uh, it's rather on the small side. However, it's nice that the uh, instruction manual has a separate tray, so you can uh, use your glove box for something else. And, well, below the headrest, uh, sorry, the armrest, we have a little tray. And below that, a little bit deeper, so you can see my arm pretty much disappears for smaller items and stuff like this. On top we have the airbag information, if any airbag is on and off. We have an auto dim mirror, um, then the lights as well individually or you can turn it off as well. And a compartment for your glasses which is actually soft covered. Then sun shades with manual light for driver and passenger. And we have no handle here, however we have handle on the other three. Um, three passenger seats. So that's pretty much it for the front. Let's jump in the second row and tell you how much space we have there. Okay, so the echo boost from the second row and seat in front is adjusted to me. I'm one meter 84 tall. I don't know how much this is in feet. Maybe I should check it out finally, but this is how it is. Um, by the way, we can adjust the seat belts in height for the front row. Uh, as I mentioned, the hooks, sorry, uh, the handles and hooks on the left and right. Then the door opens good enough, wide enough when we close it. We have the electric window, as I mentioned, it goes all the way down, which is always great. I do not like it when there is always a little piece here. Then in the doors we have cup holders basically, uh, where you can put smaller bottles. Then we have no armrest and seat-wise, space-wise, now I sit all the way back. 
can see I have plenty of headroom. Yeah, I have still two finger wide. We have the pockets in the front seats. And obviously I really very comfortable in the front, but I still have space. So, and it doesn't even touch yet. Only if I sit like really like that, then it will touch. Or if I sit like this, very comfortable. Um, this little transmission tunnel, just to keep in mind for the passenger in the middle. Then we have three headrests, which pretty much go up to the same height. It's a little bit lower in the middle. Three three-point seat belts with isofix left and right for baby seats. And unfortunately, connectivity-wise, there is nothing. So there's no USB, no 12 volt power socket, nothing. So I wish they would introduce something like that to the Echo Sport in the back, because connectivity is very important nowadays for especially teenagers and younger kids with all the electronic devices. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the back. Nothing else to say. Um, it's okay, not bad, Consider the car is very small from the outside. And now, last but not least, let's check the boot. All right, so the EcoBoost from the rear and the boot space. Just one information, if you want to refill, it's from the driver's side in Europe. In UK, you're going to be on the passenger side, but you know what I mean. Okay, so little short antenna on top, then on top to basically put like roof boxes or anything like that. It's integrated as well. Third brake light. We have the tinted windows from B-Pillar all around, a little wiper. Then we have the chrome above this, uh, the plate number with the reverse camera here in this trim level in the middle. Echo Sport on the left, Echo Boost on the right. Then here we have a little bit of chrome inside as well in here. And the thing is, if you don't know about this car and you're gonna go and you want to open it, you'll try to look here and think this will open this way. However, it doesn't. Uh, parking sensors, one more thing. Uh, if you want to open it, you basically press here and then it opens all the way to the side. We have a lifter here basically that basically pushes it out and then you have 356 liters up to 1238 if you fold down the seats. Um, little cover basically so people can't look inside. And then we have a variable floor or boot floor. Um, just to show you how much space this is, this is a Phantom 4 case. So if I put this on the side, I can put approximately three next to each other, two above and then we have some space here. Let me just put that on the side. And then we have this floor which we can take out, which is pretty stable. Below that we have a little flap with the compressor kit and the towing hook. And then we can put this in two levels. So either we put it, which is exactly this level, with a little yeah, gap on top, or we put it a level higher. And that will be there for when you fold down the seats so you don't have a step there, but it's kind of way. However, if you leave it in this way, you have something round you buy something orange, for example, it will fall out and run down the street. Uh, one more important fact for you to know. Um, obviously, you can think about it when you park your car like this tied to another car, you will not be able to open this boot. Yeah? So your shopping will, you have to remove your shopping basically before you open the car or park the car. One more thing is this corner of the boot door it can hurt like hell because when I reviewed the old Echo Sport, I hit my head on this one and it really hurt for a few days. So be careful with this one. All right, so let's close this up. And before we get on the road, one more thing I forgot because I mentioned there's no connectivity in the back. I did find a 12 volt power socket here uh, just for you to know. All right, so now let's hit the road. So it's two days later for me uh, and luckily we have some good weather today as well. So. It's always nice to present cars when it's uh, when the sun is shining. So let's get to the car and I'll tell you what I think about it. I drove now 350 kilometers with it, so not as much as usual, but I didn't have too much time because we're heading uh, out for vacation tomorrow. Okay, so fuel consumption first thing because uh, you saw it now in the beginning, but now I actually can tell you because I've done a hypermiling run, let's call it uh, a fuel efficient run to work uh, or basically from work back and I managed the lowest fuel consumption 4.6 liters according to the board computer. Uh, let's say it's gonna be 4.8 or 4.9 in reality, but uh, this is less than Ford actually is claiming, which is good. So always when I reach the claims from the manufacturers or I actually, um, if I'm better than that, then uh, I'm happy because that means that actually you can reach those figures. All right, so fuel consumption out of the thing. Let me tell you first the things that I think could be improved because obviously there is no perfect car in the world 
and this isn't one either but it's actually a nice car to drive uh, it's comfortable seats are really comfortable on you know on a firmer side which I like I do not like seats that are too soft because they don't give you side support and then you like moving around and I'm never sure about the long distance driving comfort on soft seats this one is good so I can recommend the seats now I drove the car as well with four people in it uh, and the engine was not struggling so in case you're like thinking oh my god it's a three-cylinder though 125 horsepower isn't really weak um, and for that size of car it's actually good okay so things that I think could be improved let's start with the first thing this is the key now let's take a look at it a look at the size of it compared to my hand why does it need to be such a huge key there's no reason look look how much space here is on the bottom make it smaller really and in addition you don't need to put it in anywhere it's just lying around or flying around and you have a huge bulky key in your pocket so please Ford make those smaller if you don't have any touch display on this like BMW has on the upscale models there's no need for such a big key okay that's out of the way next thing is the navigation now if I have no for no phone plugged in you see there's no plug-in phone I press navigation I have this really nice navigation screen and the inbuilt one obviously it doesn't come stock it is an option on the higher trim levels uh, however this one has it as it is a titanium version and I really like this because I mentioned it in the beginning if you have the on board navigation on you'll have a little additional display for every time you turn left or right or you have to you know some kind of information that is important for when you drive it will show you in the screen here now thing is when I plug in my phone and I don't have to have it connected with Bluetooth I just plug in my phone let me just you see here it automatically does CarPlay or mirror link which is good in a way because then you have everything here but then I have this stupid maps it's not Google Maps it's maps I'm not a fan of maps I love Google Maps though now you see here this thing is freaking annoying to use when it comes to setting a destination you basically can't really do it on the screen you have to do it on your phone that means that you're basically driving like this which is illegal and not good at all it is good in a sense that when you set the navigation and then you plug it in it works but you can't use it on the phone uh, sorry on the screen and this is a really annoying thing and if I go here I go into Ford then I'm in the car menu system again if I press card or maps it still goes back to the maps thing not the inbuilt navigation and I do dislike this a lot because this one is not as good as the inbuilt one or as Google Maps then in the rear we have basically a huge plastic area here which isn't the problem but there's no air vents there's no USB ports so for all the crazy kids with their 28 electronic devices you can't charge them anywhere other than on the right side is little 12 volt uh, power socket but it's not that expensive to build in USB ports here and I think it's a standard nowadays it's 2018 guys come on please put in USB for every seat that the car has there must be one USB port they are not expensive it's not like tons of cables that has to be uh, connected throughout the car it's very simple and very cost effective way to make people happy yeah especially if this is a car supposed to be for people with kids yeah because you never know no one is really buying this car when they are single or couple maybe but mostly it's gonna be a small family car I guess um, though I'm not sure because I you know I'm not a family yet I don't have a family yet I just have me and my wife um, what else let me just stop for safety purposes and I'll check my notes all right let's continue so three more points the rear boot door or rear door design it's cool if you have a garden if you have your designated parking lot you know which is great but if you park in a city and there's a car behind you I already showed you in the beginning you're not able to open that door you know you will not be able to reach to reach your stuff in the back when you park your car so basically you have to park in in a second row right blocking traffic unload your car put it somewhere on the side park your car and then take your stuff if it's still there if it's not stolen in the meantime if you're by yourself so I don't know what the reason why they went with this maybe the 
the, the weight of it or whatever, it would be too heavy to lift it up. Um, but in a city environment, this door is not really good to use because you can't open it. Then, standard, this car comes with halogen lights and I dislike halogen lights a lot, really a lot. Watch all my other videos if you haven't. I think they're outdated and in my opinion they should be even forbidden by law that in the European Union or in, in, in Europe at least, I don't know about other markets, obviously it's different in India and Australia and US, whatever. I think in Europe this should not be allowed anymore. They are they are not good anymore, you know. Yes, they do what they're supposed to do, but LED lights or external lights are so much better. Yeah? Yes, there will be a factor of cost and price and people always panic, oh, if you buy this car in 10 years time, it's gonna be so expensive to replace them. Come on, that's not the problem. It's just you don't wanna pay an addition for safety and I think that's wrong. That's why if like everything in the car industry, ABS, seat belts, airbags, ESP and so on. Um, the lights are unfortunately not considered as a safety feature like all the other things I mentioned just now and therefore people don't care about it and the European Union don't care, doesn't care about it. So my opinion, please put it as by law, there should be no halogen lights. At the same time, my recommendation, go for titanium or ST line trim level because there you can order them, only there. Another thing is you can't get the four-wheel drive with the petrol-powered engine with an automatic gearbox. If you want a four-wheel drive, which will come only in autumn 2018, you will be stuck with the 1.5-litre diesel and a six-speed manual. I don't mind driving manuals, but for the comfort point of view, an automatic is obviously nicer to have. Uh, at the same time, it uses a little bit more fuel, so you can drive this car much more fuel efficient with the manual gearbox. But that's one more thing. Positive points. I love the design. Really cool. Uh, I like how it looks without the rear um, spare wheel, uh, because in the old one it looked not good without it. The new one looks nice without it. Um, space is okay, even in the uh, second row, even for people like my height. Um, four people will sit comfortably, no problem at all, and as I mentioned, I drove with four people as well in it, and uh, I had no issues with the engine. So I wouldn't go for a smaller engine, I think the 125 EcoBoost uh, 1 liter is okay for this car, and obviously there aren't any, you know, much bigger engines than that, the 140 horsepower one, um, but that's it, so you're not gonna find a 2 liter engine, uh, 4 cylinder 2 liter engine in it, that's it. Uh, Price-wise, uh, starting at 19900 which is okay. Uh, obviously, if you go for the higher trim level and you equip it with some extras, you're gonna reach easily 30,000 Swiss francs. Um, you just have to see if there's any offers or anything like that. And uh, yeah, one more thing, actually, remember to the cruise control, as good as it is that it starts at 30 km h every time you turn off the engine, you get back in the car, it always disengages. I do not like cars that do that. Why is that so difficult? to just put an on button all the time, every time you have to switch it on, which is a little annoying. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So other than that, nice car, looks nice. Uh, obviously SUV makes sense as a four wheel drive, if you're fine with the diesel and the manual gearbox. And other than that, um, it's nice to drive. It looks nice to the eye, uh, I really liked it. And um, that's pretty much it, I think. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you found it informative and you could use some of the information, I would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel, um, if you're interested in cars and motorcycles and scooters. And obviously uh, a thumbs up would be nice as well. A little recognition of the work I put in. And other than that, I wish you a great day. Have fun, hopefully sunshine wherever you're from. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.